Hello guys. I've got another pin review here for you. So <clears throat> wanted to uh, do the pin BBS 355 today. And so this is a pin that I've, I've been wanting for quite some time. And when the initial launch came out with the, I think the Galaxy colorway and the clear acrylic version, I really wanted that clear acrylic version. But of course, I made the mistake of waiting. All of them sold out and I didn't get the opportunity. I went back and forth of whether or not I was going to buy the Galaxy one because those were still available at the time. And I just wasn't, you know, I wanted something where I could really see the filling mechanism. And, and really, I, I love, like a lot of you out there, I love transparent pens that, you know, you can really just watch that ink slosh around. So once this pen became available on eBay, I was super excited and immediately i didn't wait this time I, I purchased it and and got to my door um uh, quickly i've had the pen now for actually a few weeks i just haven't inked it up i've had so many other pens that i've been playing around with that i had already purchased prior to that so i've been waiting now this is one of the pens that you guys voted on last week and um, we had a tie actually with this one and the new and the Ponset. so i chose this one because this was the first vote so we're going to jump into the review. Now you'll notice I've got a little keychain here. I just, I, I ordered this along with the pen as well. And um, I got this in with the pen. And this is really cool. I, I, I don't own one of these. And I forgot the, what the model keychain is. So I apologize. I'll try and pop that in the description. But these are so cool. So the acrylic is, I think, gorgeous. But you unscrew it and you've actually got an extra nib unit in there. Now I mainly got this because not just because of the acrylic, but also I've got a really nice medium nib. Um, this actually came with the, their new fine nib. I think this is the rounded fine. So I'm gonna try this nib out to see how it performs, but I figured, hey, if I'm not, don't like it that much, I really like Pin BBS's medium nib so I can always switch it out. Plus it's kind of an interesting keychain. So, that's it on that. I just wanted to show you guys. I'm going to set it off to the side and we're going to talk about the pen. So here's the pen. Now this <clears throat> is in the smog colorway and I'll show you guys. Here is the sticker. I'm not going to translate everything like I normally would, but we have 355-54 and then here you can see on the tag smog. This is not my only smog acrylic that I have. I actually have it in the 309 and this acrylic I think is actually more attractive overall because of how all of these um, white kind of cloudy looking materials are. There's just a lot more in there, but I actually like this for this pen that it doesn't have as much because I can see more of the actual filling mechanisms and there's just kind of hints of those white uh, acrylic pieces in the pen. I actually like that. Um, the design of this pen I think is really nice. I like the weight of it. I like the um, kind of the glossy finish up here on the cap finial. It looks to me really nice. The clip on this pin is is not, I'm not crazy about it. I wasn't crazy about it on the 456, but as far as functionality, the clip is fine. It works perfectly well. Um, very basic clip, but I don't think the clip needs to necessarily pull your eyes away from the rest of the pin. So I, I get that part. Um, the band, very similar to what we see on a lot of Pin BBS pins, really nice, fat, wide band with Pin BBS um, uh, logo there. And then we have, of course, the uh, 355 description on the back of that band. The pin does slightly taper down, down here to our the end here. Or, and of course, this is actually our uh, blind cap right here, or our knob. Of course it is, it does um, uncap. So in order to uncap it, there's one full turn. It's about two full turns to uncap it. A little bit more than I thought it would be, but hey, I don't have any issues with that. And then we'll show off the nib real quick. So as I said before, this is um, a little bit different nib than what we have on other pins. Like the design of it is basically the same, but the coloring and everything is a little bit different. And this one does have that upturn. So it, I thought it was just a kind of rounded fine, but to me it looks about the same as far as the nib goes. And of course we've got that pin BBS uh, feed there with those you know crazy thin fins. 
Now, <clears throat> you've got your filling mechanism here, which is primarily what a lot of people get this pin for. So this is the bulk filler, um, not to be mistaken with the Con Ed bulk filler, of course. And um, very interesting design. I think it's, it's really cool. Um, I love the fact that, you know, similar to the 456, it's kind of one of those, you know, you could argue it's a little bit of a gimmicky um, filling system, but I think it's really neat. And that's one of the things that is awesome about PIM BBS that I like personally. I'm not someone that gets super crazy about all their acrylics, but I like the fact that they're kind of innovative in their designs. Um, they literally have a pen or something for everyone. Um, if you're big into acrylics or materials, they got you covered there. If you're big into like, you know, unique filling mechanisms, they've got you covered there. If you're big into like different unique pen designs, like the 471 or the 380, or even one of these, they've got you covered there. And I think that this pen speaks to that similar to like the 456. Now, as far as how the filling mechanism works, I will actually fill this pin on camera for you guys, or at least attempt to, so that way you guys can kind of see it. I have already played with this filling mechanism, and we'll kind of cover that, um, kind of what my experiences were with that initially. So when I first um, got this pin a few weeks ago, my first thing I wanted to do was just see how the uh, piston and every, how everything performed and how it worked. So when you unscrew the uh, piston knob, back here, or the blind cap, I guess I should say. Your, the piston rod, when I first went to move it, it was very, very stiff, almost like it was stuck in mud. So my initial thought was it probably just needed some lubrication. I mean, literally it was really tough to get this thing to move at all. Um, and then when I went to engage, so when you pull up, you actually wanna turn it counterclockwise. So you're not gonna turn it clockwise, counterclockwise. I went, you know, you see your threads here. So right now I haven't turned it at all. So it still can move freely. It's not gonna engage the actual plastic piston there. When you go to turn it counterclockwise, you literally just want it to engage this plastic piece just enough to be able to get it to move. The mistake that I made when I first played with this was I, want, I, I thought I needed to really get those threads in there. So I screwed it down. And then the other thing was when I went to push, so when I went to actually push down so this, and I'll kind of show you guys, and you'll probably hear it when I go to move it, but this actually snaps into place back here on our, uh, it snaps into place essentially. When I went to move it the first time, I mean, I could like literally, I had to like torque it down almost to finally get it to loosen up to where it can move back and forth. And it was a little bit sticky. Um, it, it just didn't flow very well. And then of course the next thing was, is when I went to put it back into place, I heard the snap, everything was, seemed fine, and I went to unscrew it, which of course, unscrewing it, you're now gonna turn clockwise. All that happened was, is our plastic piston here just kept spinning around the barrel. So I was like, okay, great, I've already broke the pin. Um, so I went, I you know, went to push down again, you know, I, I felt it unsnap and it you know, moved, of course, fine. Went, reseated it back into a place, went to unscrew it, same thing, just spin, 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 spin. So the next thing I did was I set the pin down and did a little bit of research online, found out that you know removing everything is pretty simplistic. So I actually removed this back piece here, pulled everything out, um, really, you know, first off, unscrewed it and then really nicely lubricated the, the rod, the, the piston mechanism, everything in there, the threads, all of that with silicone grease. Now getting it back into the barrel was a little bit of a challenge because you have two O-rings here and you have to push it back through these threads. Now I do know that you should, there's a specialized tool that you can actually put inside of here and remove this knob. Um, and I'm assuming that if I was to able to re remove that, I could probably pull everything back up through the other end of the barrel and I probably wouldn't run into all those issues, but I don't have that tool. So I had to go through these threads and what would happen is it would create this front O-ring to become a little bit distorted. So it took a few tries and just kind of some wiggling and, and some patience. And then finally I got everything in there and, and it worked fine. I tested it out and it worked good. One other thing to note, I don't know if it's like this on all of the 355s, but this little metal band right here, actually, at least on mine, will pop off. And I, I almost lost it because it popped off and then it started rolling across my desk. So just in case you have to take this apart, just note that. 
Um, you do not get a wrench with this, but just a, a regular wrench will actually work to unscrew this mechanism and, and everything is good to go. I don't remember what size wrench it was, I apologize, um, but it, it will work and I had no issues or anything like that. Now, whenever you go to engage the piston here, you literally just wanna screw it enough to actually engage that piston. And then you've gotta kind of push down and you'll, you, again, you kind of probably heard that, that pop. Now it's back into place, push down. And I, I think the more you use it, the easier and the better it gets, but you'll notice now we're moving back and forth very well. It was not working like this before. Um, but you literally only want to screw it in enough to engage that piston. You do not want to torque this down. If you do, you're going to stand a really good chance of getting this stuck. And I've seen that in some other reviews and I'll post one of those. Um, there's a review posted to fountain pen network about this issue. And I'll post that in the description. If you guys want to read that, it's a very good read, very nice pictures, very descriptive. And it really gets into kind of the same th issue that I had basically. And they actually show pictures of this disassembled. So that's another nice thing. If you run into that issue, watch that and, and it will be very beneficial or I'm sorry, read that and it'll be very beneficial. But in essence, that's the pin guys. Um, very interesting filling system. The material I think is gorgeous. I did want to cover that with you because that is, I think probably really right now, the only downside that I see with the pen. Now comparing it real fast to the 456, we see it right here. I'll do a, a better comparison here in a moment and I'm actually going to compare it to some other pen BBS pens so you guys can kind of see some sizing comparisons. Okay, so here we see it now being compared to some other pen BBS models. So of course down here at the bottom, we have our pen BBS 355. We have our 456 right above it. We have our 309 here. And then this is actually a 266 right here, or I think uh, you could call it a, a 308 if I'm not mistaken. Um, this one is branded a 266 though. Um, basically the same pin for the most part. So you'll notice that the 355 is really the biggest out of the four pins um, from a girth perspective, as well as an overall length as well. And I like that. It, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't consider it an oversized pen necessarily, but it is a really nice size and weight. I really enjoy that. I think it's gonna really be nice from a writing experience. Now let's take a look at the pen posted compared to the other four, as well as look at the sections and the nib. So now here we see all four pins posted. And again, the 355 is the longest out of the four pens. And I, I do like the way, I mean, it, it does create for a very, you know, large pen. And I, I don't personally, I don't think it's a pen that you need to post unless you just have abnormally large hands. But when it posts, it does have this very nice gratifying uh, snap to it, whereas the other three don't. Um, but you can kind of see how it fits in my hand posted. It, to me, it doesn't feel extremely back heavy posted. Uh, but again, it, it does make the pin very long. The 456 actually to me is a little bit better posted. Um, so just my honest opinion. Uh, but I do like the the way this one posts overall. And of course we've got our 266. This one is a nice one, but it's got that classic cigar shape. This is a good pin to write with posted as well. Now looking at the sections, of course the nibs are all, all about really relatively about the same, but the sections, there are some differences on the sections here. So the, four, five, the 355 is definitely the um, widest section out of the four. Um, as far as overall uh, length and everything, about the same as our 456 and roughly about the same as the uh, 309 here. The 266 section is more, uh, think more of a classic design, uh, similar to like a Schaefer section, a little bit wider of course, but definitely more of a classic design. I tend to gravitate more towards wider sections. I like that filling for the way that I write. Uh, it really helps to prevent um, hand fatigue, at least for me. So I have a feeling I'm gonna like this. I haven't written with it excessively, so I can't say that for sure, but I do like the overall section design. And I do enjoy writing with the 456. It's been a nice pen to write with for long writing sessions. And again, as far as the weight goes, I'll put all the weights and dimensions up on the screen for you guys here in a moment, but weight wise, it's really nice. 
Let's take a look at all four pins just real fast unposted so you can see their overall length, comparatively speaking. Now here we see all four pins po um, unposted, and this is to me where you get more, more consistency with the writing experience on pin BBS pins. And one, another thing I, I kind of like, the overall length is roughly about the same between all four pins. And, and I think all four pins are very comfortable to write with unposted. Um, so I definitely like that part of it. Now you'll notice the 355 is maybe just literally a hair longer, um, but Overall, this again is a pen that fits very comfortably in the hand. I think once it's inked up, it's even gonna have a nicer weight to it and just a very nice flowing pen to write with. Now I will show you guys what I was talking about. So when you go to put this cap on, you kind of hear that snap. It like literally almost snaps into place, kind of similar to some Twisby pens and some other ones, but it really, I mean, it's not going anywhere. Once you get this cap on, I mean, it is, it is not going anywhere at all. So that is nice. Um, so if you are someone that really has to write with your pins posted, this one does post nicely and very securely. All right. So up next, I will, um, I'm going to try and get the camera set up so we can ink this on screen and hopefully I don't create a disaster or a mess with the pen because this will be my first time to put any liquid in the pen at all. So we're going to see what happens. Okay, guys. So I think I have this set up about as good as I'm gonna get it. Um, so here's our pen. And uh, I'm literally looking through the camera. So this is gonna be a little bit difficult. So hopefully I don't mess everything up. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and uncap the ink. And I'm gonna use this ink here. Uh, I really, really like this ink. Now this is technically a what they call their twinkle ink. So it's like a glitter ink. So. Hopefully it works well with this pen, but I think it will look really cool on the barrel. It's one of the reasons why I'm picking it. So here we have our pen. Now I showed you guys what I was stating before as far as, so you unscrew, of course, your blind cap back here. Now we're going to now engage the piston. So we pull everything up and you're gonna, again, screw the same direction that you did to unscrew your blind cap. But you're only gonna wanna like screw in your rod here just enough to really catch this uh, plastic piston piece. So we're gonna do maybe like one small turn and then we're gonna push down. Oh, see, no, nope, I didn't even catch it. I can feel it catching that time. We're gonna push down, we've got it, all right? So you heard that snap. Now we can actually move it. And what we're gonna do, we've got everything pushed down. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the ink submerge our pen in there and try and get my fingers somewhat out of the way so you can see this and we're going to pull up when you see inks drawing up oh my goodness we're going to get the ink in there now from here i'm going to go ahead and re engage that piston and then i'm going to unscrew just a little bit i feel like it's pretty good now and i'm going to push down now the reason why i'm leaving the pen in the ink as I read that if you pull it out and you try and push the piston back down, a lot of times ink will expel through the, um, the section and then you're gonna get ink everywhere. So we want the ink, of course, to go just right back into the, the bottle. So we're gonna push down and let's see if any ink is kind of coming out. Yeah, we got some drips. All right, we're back in place. We're gonna screw our blind cap back down and there you have it. So pretty nice feel, not bad. See that ink sloshing around in there, pretty cool. Wipe the nib off a little bit. Get some of that ink off the feed. And we're pretty well filled up. All right, there you have it. So that's how you do it. Again, you know, I say the biggest thing is just make sure you don't torque down that uh, rod too much and then leave the uh, pen in the ink, uh, inside the ink. So when you go to push that rod back down, you're not then gonna expel ink all over, say your desk or all over your clothes or something like that. So just, that would be one another thing I'd call out. So that's it. All right, up next guys, I post some weights and dimensions on the screen for you. And then we'll do a writing sample to see how this nib performs. See you guys in a sec. All right, guys, 
So here we are back for the writing sample portion. And real quick, just gotta show off that ink again. This is beautiful ink. It's like a bluish color and it's got, um, you know, those particles in it to kind of make it that glittery twinkle, so to speak. Um, really, once you get everything figured out though, the pen's really relatively easy to fill and I think it's just really cool. So, all right, let's uncap here. Let's get a writing sample going. Have not written with this nib at all, so we're gonna see what it does. So we have the pin BBS 355. And this is, we'll do dash 54. And this is the smog. This is going to be a fine nib. And it does, as you can tell, have that uh, kind of upturn. I thought it was gonna be the rounded fine and I misspoke initially, but it does have that upturn. <clears throat> kind of show you guys that ink a little bit. You kind of see that glitteriness to it. All right, let's do an actual full writing sample. There you have it. Not bad at all, not bad. You know, as far as wetness goes, not not an extremely wet rider, but also this ink, I'm sure it kind of clogs up the feet a little bit. So this ink's actually a, a little bit better than some of like the diamine shimmering inks and stuff. It does not, it doesn't really seem to clog up the feeds as bad and it's pretty consistent on its flow. Um, line variation, I mean, these these nibs don't really give you much as far as that goes. I'm um, sure you really get any line variation. I would say this this nib's not bad though. It's a little bit, you know, it does kind of give some of that toothiness or that, that toothy feedback. So it's not the uh, best nib or best fine nib I've ever used. I will probably at some point switch out to that medium nib, but I'll, I'll give this one a go for a while. Uh, reverse writing, uh, it's somewhat possible. Let me get some reverse writing out. It's very, very, uh, fine like a ultra 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 extra fine and uh, even more scratchy so probably not the best for that but hey it does write words all right so what do i like about the pen what do i not like about the pen so i like a lot about the pen um, i was enamored with the 456 i'm pretty well enamored so far with the 355 i'm a sucker for transparent pens i'm a sucker for kind of unique filling systems. Um, I'm more into the mechanical part behind the pen than I am the the overall, I guess, material, meaning the acrylics. I love a beautiful acrylic like anybody, but I love different filling mechanisms and things like that that are you can kind of tinker and play around with. It does have its drawbacks. You know, just be very careful when you pull that rod up. Uh, it's not too terribly hard to take apart though. Um, so if you have issues, you can do it. I think just about anybody can, even if you're not very mechanically sound, just have some patience and, and make sure you have some silicone grease on hand. That would be another thing. Um, and have some patience getting everything put back together. But I mean, it's a cool, cool pen. It feels really nice in the hands. I think, you know, overall writing experience for it is gonna be great. I think it will be even better with a medium nib because um, I, I do like those pin BBS medium nibs. So I probably will switch it out. But other than that, guys, it's 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 worth it. I mean, if you can get this pen in a 40 to $50 price range, I know that still sounds high for a uh, Chinese fountain pen, but it's really cool. If you're someone that has always wanted to try out the uh, a bulk filler, such as the Conid bulk filler, and you don't want to pay that super premium price, this would give you an option of trying out that filling mechanism and, and having, to my opinion, a really cool pen. So I like it. I approve it. It's a great pen. Go get you one before they all sell out again because they're, they're going like crazy like usual. And uh, try it out. Till next time, guys. I will talk to you later. Um, oh, I did want to show you guys one thing. 
And so I showed this pen. I told you guys there was something inside of it. So if any of you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what's inside this pen, but I will show it anyways. We have a special nib in there. Let me know if you guys want to see that for the next review, or if you still want me to stick with that new, there's Naponset. Um, and you guys can guess what that nib is. Um, so there's that. Until next time, guys, take care. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.